Hi there. Now for this question, we're being asked to solve this trigonometric equation. 4 cos cubed theta minus 7 cos theta minus 3 equals 0. For theta between 0 and 2 pi radians inclusive. And we've got to give the angle theta as an exact angle. So to do something like this, what I want to do, because it's in the same trigonometric function, is now to try and factorise it. And if you did the previous part of this question, you'd know that we factorised this expression here, 4x cubed minus 7x minus 3. It was identical to 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 times x plus 1. And can you see the similarity that we've got between this left hand side here and we've, what we've got here. Wherever we've got an x, it's now replaced with cos theta. So we can factorise this, it's going to be something like this. So we're therefore going to have, instead of 2x plus 1, it's now going to be 2 cos theta plus 1. And then it's going to be multiplied with 2x minus 3, which is now 2 cosine theta minus 3 and then finally we had x plus 1 so it's now cos theta plus 1 and this is now going to equal that 0. So when we get something like this we can say that therefore each of these factors must equal 0. So that means that if 2 cos theta plus 1 equals 0 then rearranging that we could say that cos theta would equal minus one half. Or if 2 cos theta minus 3 equals 0, rearranging that for cos theta, we'd have cos theta equals 3 over 2. And finally for cos theta plus 1 equaling 0, cosine theta would have to equal minus 1. So we've got three separate equations that we need to solve. So if we start with this first one here, when cos theta equals minus a half. So what we need to do is inverse cosine both sides of our equation here. So therefore we end up with theta equaling the inverse cosine of minus a half. Now to do something like this what I'd want to do is draw a quadrant diagram or some of you might think, know of it as a cast diagram. I'd start here with zero radians and I'm assuming that you're familiar with these diagrams. If not, do check out the videos that I've got on that. Okay, so turning anti-clockwise is turning in the positive sense and we're looking for where cosine theta is negative. And cosine is negative in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. So you draw two lines equally inclined to the horizontal line here, okay? Mark in that those two angles, those two acute angles, are exactly the same size. Now, we want to find out values of theta between 0 and 2 pi, so we start from here, turn anti-clockwise to the first blue line, and that's one possible value for theta. The other one, we start from here, and we turn again anti-clockwise all the way around until we get to the other blue line. So that's another possible value for theta. Now we've got to work out the angle theta in radians and we're told to give it as an exact value. Now make sure your calculator is in radians mode and do the inverse cosine of minus a half. Problem is you might not have a calculator that gives it as an exact form. And the way around this that I find is to switch it across to degrees mode. And if you do the inverse cosine of minus a half in degrees mode, what you'll find is that you get theta equals 120 degrees. I'll put that in brackets up here, 120 degrees. Now that refers to this angle round here, this red one. But what is 120 degrees in radians? Well, I always think of 60 degrees as pi upon 3 radians, so 120 degrees is going to be twice that amount. So in radians, we're going to have 2 pi over 3, or 2 thirds pi. 
Now for the green theta, if I was working in degrees, the red one was 120 degrees. We found out that this was 60 degrees. So for the green one in degrees, it would be half a turn, 180 degrees, plus another 60 degrees. That's 240 degrees. Okay. But in radians, that's going to be half a turn, pi radians, plus another pi upon 3 radians, the equivalent of 60 degrees. That's going to give you 4 thirds pi radians. Okay, so there are two solutions. There's the red one, okay, and this one is the green angle. Now for the next equation, cos theta equals 3 upon 2, I'm going to leave that out for the moment. Let's go on to cos theta equals minus 1. So we'll say here when cosine of theta equals minus 1. And to get theta, theta is obviously going to be equal to the inverse cosine of minus 1. Now, with an equation like this, when cosine theta equals minus 1, naught or 1, we should really be familiar with these very common angles. I tend to work from the graph, okay? So I'll just show you, rather than the quadrant diagram, because, as I say, you should be familiar with this. If this is theta and this is y, then the graph of y equals cosine theta look something like this, okay, when we go between 0 and 360 degrees or 0 and 2 pi radians. It goes between minus 1 and 1 and this would be 90 degrees, the lowest point here would be at 180, this would be 270 degrees and this would be 360 degrees. But we're working in radians and this lowest point where cosine theta equals minus 1 is at pi radians, okay? So this is the graph then of y equals cosine theta, which we should be familiar with. So for this one, theta equals the inverse cosine of minus 1. The answer is it's going to be pi radians. Okay, so that's that. Now, let's just have a look at this last equation here. Cosine theta equals 3 over 2. Do you know what the solution to this will be? Well, there's no solution because this is 1.5 and the graph of y equals cosine theta only goes between minus 1 and 1. So if you were to work out what the inverse cosine of 3 upon 2 was on your calculator, you'd get an error. There is, in other words, no solution. So when it comes to writing down all our solutions. We've got theta equals, and if we do them in ascending order, the first one is 2 pi upon 3, okay, which we had here. Then we've got pi, and then we finally got 4 thirds pi, okay, or 4 pi upon 3. So I hope that's given you some idea then how we go about that one.